Hi guys, today I'm gonna to show you how you can optimize your photos to look best on Instagram, just by tweaking a few things in Photoshop. And I'm gonna start right now. Hi guys, and welcome back to the channel. My name is James, and if it is the very first time to this channel, and you wanna learn all about Photoshop, Lightroom and everything photography related. Start now by subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss anything. So in this video guys we're going to be talking about Instagram and how you can optimize your photos to look their best when you upload them to Instagram. So today what I'm going to do is we're going to be talking about how to enhance colors to really make them pop, how to enhance contrast to really make your images look their best, but also how to optimize your photos using Photoshop color modes, also using the resolution and crops, but also how to optimize it so the compression doesn't affect it when you do upload it to Instagram. So if you'd like to download the pre-selected photo that I'm going to be using in this tutorial so you can follow along, then go ahead to the link in the description. But without further ado guys, let's get started. So before we start going ahead and editing the photo, changing colors and contrast, we want to check two things first. The first thing is the bit rate of the photo. So this is what the photo was shot at sometimes, or for instance myself, I actually shoot at 16 bit. So you'd have to change that back down to eight bit and we can always check that in Photoshop. And the second thing that we want to change is the color mode. So what mode or what RGB settings you used when you actually took the photo. And we can check these two things in Photoshop. So all you'll need to do is go ahead and open the photo. Again, this is the photo that I'm gonna be working with today. We want to change these two settings, one to 8-bit, and the second one, we want to change it to sRGB. So first thing, we're gonna change the bit rate. So we're gonna to go to image, we're going to go to mode. This is a 16-bit channel. And what we want to do is change it to 8-bit because that is available for everywhere online. So we'll go ahead and just simply change it to 8-bit like so. And that will convert it from 16-bit to 8-bit. So you can now upload it online. The second thing we want to do is we want to change the color mode. And we can see the color mode by going to edit and all the way down to color settings or it's shift command K on your keyboard. Now, as you can see here, we've got our workspace We've got our bunch of different color states, but the one that we're mostly focusing on today is RGB. And at the moment I'm shooting in Adobe RGB 1998. So we're gonna to want to change that to sRGB. And you can see that in the preset panel here. And as you can see, there are so many different color modes. So that's something you always want to check if you're ever wanting to upload either to your portfolio or to Instagram. And what we can do is once we've changed those two things, we can click OK, but before we start editing, we want to have a look at the color space. So if you ever upload anything to Instagram or online, you want to take into consideration the UI or the user interface of the background that you will be uploading. So for instance, my website, for instance, I've chosen 80% gray. So I know if I'm ever going to upload anything to my website, I'm going to place an 80% gray behind the photo just to see what it looks like. And at the moment, we've got our just default Photoshop uh, background. So if we want to change it to either black, white, or a whole range of colors, we can do so by right clicking on the background. And as you can see, it pops up with this um, preset panel and we can change it to black, dark gray, medium gray, light gray, or custom. If we click custom, what it will do is it will choose the setting that you had previously. Now you can change that by right clicking and going select custom color. And this will allow you to change the color of the background. Now this is really important for Instagram because Instagram has got a white user interface. So you want to change the background to white to see what your photo would look like and optimize your photo for Instagram. So what we can do is just go ahead and select white in your color picker and click OK. And now we're ready to start editing colors and contrast. So as you can see now, the colors in the photo look quite dark versus what they did previously. Again, because of the white user interface we're going to be using on Instagram. So what we need to do first is just brighten the photo. So we're gonna to go to our adjustment layers icon. We're gonna go up to curves. And what we're gonna do is just gonna overall brighten the photo. So I'm just gonna take the midtones. I'm just going to move them up slightly. 
And as you can see, we have brightened the photo so it looks correct on the white background now. Lovely. So the next thing I'm going to do is I just want to enhance the colors, especially in the skin tones. And we can do this by creating a selective color layer. Now, selective color layer is one of my favorite ways of adding in and subtracting color because it doesn't increase or decrease the amount of saturation. It just moves the colors around within the color space. So we're gonna go down to our adjustment layers icon and we're gonna go to select to the very bottom one where you can see it says selective color. Now, we, what we want to do is kind of boost the reds and yellows found in the skin tones. And we can do this by selecting colors here. We can select red and we can also select yellow. I'm gonna select yellow first. And what we can do is we just want to increase the amount of yellow. So we've got a yellow slider here. We're just gonna increase the amount of yellow like so. And I'm probably gonna increase it to around 50. Lovely, and what we want to do in the red tones, we want to increase the reds. But as you can see, there isn't a red slider. So what is the opposite of red? Cyan. So what we can do is decrease the amount of cyan in the reds, and hopefully that should bring out the reds. So what we can do is just decrease them like so. Lovely, and I think I'm gonna go for a minus 60 cyan, like so. And as you can see, we do the before and after. It has really pumped up those colors, but it's increased them in a natural way. So again, we're not increasing or decreasing the amount of saturation. Lovely. So the next thing I want to do now is add a little bit of sharpness to the photo, but only to the areas which are highlighted in a sharp. So for instance, the uh, eyes, the lips, and a little bit of the nose. And we can do this by creating a high pass layer. So what we want to do is just duplicate the background. So we've got the background here. We're going to press Command J on our keyboard. And we want to turn this into a smart object. So it allows us to turn on smart filters to create a customizable filter in Photoshop. So we're going to right click on that layer and we're going to go to convert to smart object. Lovely. So what we want to do now is go to filter, other, and we want to create a high pass filter. So we'll go ahead and select high pass. Now we'll come up with this gray kind of um, photo kind of filter here. But what we want to do is focus on the details that you can see to come through the gray, because this is what we're going to enhance when we change the blending mode. So as you can see, if we zoom in, if we have it on a radius of one, as you can see, there's no information. So if we increase it, what we want to do is increase it to the amount that you can see all of the kind of sharp areas of the photo, but you can see the background, there's no information. We want to make sure we keep it that way because if we turn it up too high, as you can see, all of the information is coming through and we don't necessarily want that. So we just want to enhance it just enough so we can start seeing the kind of main features of the face without revealing anything else. So I think three pixels will work for this particular image. And all we can do is click OK. Lovely, so once we've done that, we'll need to change the blending mode. Now there are two blending modes that work well with a high pass filter, overlay and soft light. Overlay is quite a harsh look and it works quite well for very sharp images, but soft light I would say works for most images. So what we can do is go check on our background copy, go to our blending mode, we're gonna drop it down to soft light. Lovely, so we can do the before, and after, and as you can see, it's really sharpened up the image, but it's left all of the out of focus or blurry areas alone, which is perfect. Lovely, so there's, I think I'm quite happy with the colors now, but what we need to do now is create export settings to change the resolution, also change the crop, because Instagram only allows certain crops. So if you want it to take up the most amount of space on the Instagram page, so for instance on your phone, if you ever upload on Instagram, you'll have a certain size panel here. And what you want to do is you want to make sure that it takes up the most amount of room as it, it takes the longest amount of time to scroll past your photo so people can see it for more. So what we can do is we can actually use the crop that Instagram recommends. So what we can do is go to our crop settings on the left hand side tools panel and we want to go ahead and select four by five. Now again, you can always choose square or you can choose like a panoramic, but I find to take up the most amount of room and to look best, especially for portraits, I would definitely recommend using a four by five ratio crop. So once you've got that selected, all you'll need to do is simply move that around until you are happy with the result. And as you can see, I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna click okay. So that is now cropped it, so it's optimized. But what we need to do now is just simply change the resolution. So the compression of Instagram doesn't affect the quality. 
So what we can do is make sure we've got our background selected. We want to go to image and we want to go to image size. Now this is the resolution of your photo and we want to make sure the resolution is smaller than 1920 height by 1080 width. So it's very similar to a 16 by nine ratio crop that you would have if you ever upload, for instance, a high definition photo. So what we can do is we can check the width and the height. I'm going to choose the width, make sure it's smaller. So I'm going to choose 1920. And as you can see, that's a little bit too big. So what we need to do is I'm just going to change the width to 1080. Lovely. And as you can see, the width is the maximum width we, uh, Instagram allows to upload but the um, 1350 is slightly smaller. So that will fit within Instagram's compression. So all we need to do is confirm that is you'll just need to click OK. But you also wanna make sure your resolution is 72. All photos that get uploaded to Instagram and especially to the internet have a 72 pixel per inch resolution. So make sure you've got 72 selected there. And all we need to do is click OK. Lovely. So what we've done is we've cropped it so it fits on Instagram, but we've also changed the resolution. So the compression of Instagram is fixed. Lovely. So what we can do now is we can just save as. I'd probably recommend saving it as a JPEG. So what we'll do is we'll save it as a JPEG like so. I'm going to save it as photo one because that's the photo I'm working with. We'll click save. And then we want to make sure the quality is at maximum. And we've got a progressive format option selected there as well. And all we need to do is click OK. And there we go. So if I go to my uh, desktop and we upload the photo, this photo now is, is perfect for uploading to Instagram. And there we go, guys. Brilliant. And there we go, guys. So that is how you can optimize your photos to look their best when you upload them to Instagram. So if you follow those tips, you should get the best results possible. Again, guys, if you want to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, it really, really does help my channel grow. Also, if you want to hit the bell notification so you don't miss my next video. But until next time, guys, keep creating.